Well, it's the third turn, and uh, regardless of who started or whatever the case may be, the activation now has fallen to uh, the Liechtenstein uh, group from Austria. Now, I've come upon my first little quandary. In the rules, it says that uh, if you're going to charge, there's an opportunity to counter charge, which is all very nice and well. Well and good. But there doesn't appear to be any reaction move, uh, to movement or reaction, even facing changes, uh, to sort of these uh, flanking maneuvers here. So while, yes, I have certainly put these guys out on a limb, uh, and it was probably not smart play, I'm curious about, given the time scale of an hour and a half, whether you know the French would have just sat here and let these two units surround them. Now, what, what am I trying to do here? What I'm trying to do here is set it up so that when this heavy cavalry approaches here and it announces the charge and approaches, these guys can actually retreat away. So what I'm trying to do is prevent that retreat because if they go here, they either become disordered or, or, or uh, eliminated. I forget which it is. Uh, or they... Uh, and so, so I'm trying to limit where they can retreat. Now, based on what I've read in the rules, there's no nothing to stop what I've done here occurring. Now, I probably wouldn't want to do this attack because with the result, the, the modifications, the DRMs that are, are here, uh, we are only going to pick up a plus two for the cavalry shock. Actually, a plus three. To the to the die roll, and let me see. There's probably not much else here that's going to benefit anybody other than cohesion, which is just a so that'll bring it down to a plus two because I think the cohesion is better for the French. So uh, well, it's a straight die roll, and we would add two to the die roll. Which is you know a twenty five percent twenty five percent increase right twenty percent increase yeah so I would roll a one that would be really bad for the attacker so maybe it does work okay um, but if I had rolled an eight that would have become a ten and that would be a, a breakthrough. Had have done that now. What I also could have done is previously I could have stacked these two heavy guys together and attacked with a two to one and picked up some extra bonuses on that die roll. Interesting. All right, just thought I'd share that with you. If you've played this game before, pop me a note about this reaction facing reaction movement. I guess I'm I'm leaning on great battles of history experiences here, and this is a different uh, different era, different system. But given the time scale of an hour and a half. Uh, this seems a little unrealistic to me that this would have uh, transpired in this manner. All right, later. Just as a follow-on, uh, here's the ending situation for those cavalry units. We decided to move them all up adjacent and not attack because I've got the artillery under here. And we next activation that we, we receive, we would then uh, have an opportunity to fire our artillery and then conduct a charge. And you can actually do... Uh, you actually leave the hex and then come back in uh, without changing face or anything like that and uh, conduct a charge. And I could uh, do that or I could just attack stationary with, with two heavies against one light here. So we're going to see what happens there. Okay, so this is the current status of the activations. And we've now rolled back around to Lichtenstein. And we're going to go and conduct this, uh, this artillery barrage here against these units and see what happens. Except, <laughs> so I just paused the video and had a look, except that uh, uh, the Liechtenstein guys don't have an activation for the second turn. They don't have orders for the second activation, which means, guess what, that they cannot conduct fire, I believe, since you have to have orders to be able to fire. So what I'm going to do is try and roll under their efficiency rating and see if we can get them activated for the turn. Uh, so they will we'll have the uh, notation of having received orders, which will make this turn far more interesting. Alright, so here's how this works when we're rolling for initiative. If the leader, 
the overall commander is within his command range of four of one of the units in the formation or tactical group. Uh, tactical, tactical group is a subset of a formation that is more than two hexes away from another unit in the formation. All of these guys are within two hexes of each other and thereby allowing them all to be together. Okay, so, so we, we get to use the uh, modifier of two and we rolled a five for this guy and we rolled a four for this guy. I believe I've only got a roll, roll per unit. No, it's only one, so I've got to take, I've got to do this thing. I think I'm, I'm allowed to use the, uh, I've got to roll under three. You can see that three there. I get to subtract uh, the two, the red two there off of that. So that's going to bring that down. Uh, I guess it's going to, either way, it's three or under. It has to be three or under, so either way, that's going to work out that uh, the formation is, now has orders. Excuse me, that's what I believe. I'll, I'll be right back. Alright, so we're going to do this artillery fire, and because they're all activated, I'm actually, I think, we'll be able to do some damage to these guys, so I'm going to uh, just do one attack on each. And the first one we're going to do is this guy here, we're going to hit these large guys. So we take uh, five factors of combat, and we roll the die, d10. Oh, it's not going to be pretty. Okay, we roll the nine. So that makes that 14, but we're firing at infantry and cavalry at point blank range. So that makes that 15, and 15 or more is routed. So those dudes would be routed. They've automatically got to be disordered and retreat two. Might even be more, might be three. I'd have to check. What's the routing rule? No, I'm pretty sure it's two. Now, this guy. Okay, he rolls a zero, which is a zero. And then a plus six, so he's on the six table, which is a CT, a cohesion test. So we roll to see if we pass the cohesion test. And we do not. We uh, roll an eight against a six, so he fails his cohesion test, and I believe that means he'll become disordered. And he will probably also have to retreat. My very first combat here, so I'm very excited. Let's see if I have... All right, let's see. We flip him over. He stays where he is. Routed is the two hex retreat, so we got that part right, except it's three for cavalry, so it comes back another hex. And I think that's it. Okay, so now, what we're going to do is, given that... Uh, that was quite a silly move to try and push our forces out so far. We may actually either restart or, now that I see how this system works a little bit better, that's pretty deadly. <laughs> we will, uh, because now what I would probably want to do is, is uh, these guys have an opportunity to charge here. They would charge these guys, from, or just melee from these two hexes. In fact, I could even do this and get a huge bonus. I'd have 8, 10, 11 to three, that's uh, it's gonna be just uh, a three to one. And I could even bring in one of these guys and make it four to one and that'd be all over. And then we would have lost most of that cavalry. And I'm not sure how that would impact the game long term, but I'm pretty sure that uh, the French didn't go gallivanting around the uh, the front of the, the line there like that. But anyway, we'll, we'll think about that and we'll Kind of continue on from there. There's our first little combat in uh, this uh, this system, and I must say I'm I'm just a little concerned about the the movement, the flanking, ability to flank like that, given the time span of a turn. Otherwise, everything else feels just you know feels all right. Quick little update: it's still turn three, and uh, I did make the uh, elect to make the French basically stay static for the entire first three turns and I did not rearrange their movement at all. I, I, I do need to recheck the, the impact of the crest. I know it affects line of sight but I need to make sure that that makes um, where their position makes sense. Uh, so what I did was reorient uh, the Liechtenstein forces to uh, approach Essling and conduct, start conducting barrages in their second 
act in their next activation next turn uh, and now we know the importance of keeping a solid line we probably need to finish uh, finish up up here um, and, and, and pinch this this approach in from here not that I would expect the French to be busting out of their fairly solid position. So that's the kind of situation we did. Uh, we rewound the turn, uh, pulled back the forces, and uh, and started turn three over. And we're now at this at the current stage. We're now uh, we have four chips left, and they're all French. We'll carry on from here.